Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. Well, I blew up the amplifier under test here. This is the JAT Easy Amp. I was testing the frequency response. I was running it at around 100 kilohertz and increasing it from there. And the supply went into current limit mode. You know, normally the little lights here are green when you draw over the maximum set current it will turn red and they turned red so uh, I was thinking I was experiencing a th an issue called shoot through which can happen when you run the amplifier at very high frequencies like that so I turned off the outputs on the supply turned it back on and it went right back into current limit so I uh, and made sure I turned the frequency down and I tried to turn it off and it would not come out of current limit and nothing was shorted so uh, it looks like the transistors the outputs have shorted no smoke no sound or anything Let's see if I can get this in the shot or not this meter is just too big for getting in the shot here. Okay, we're in diode mode. And now we are. Okay. So if I go across the rails here from one tab of the output to the other, I have the power supply disconnected so the capacitors don't throw me and zero dead short so if I go from the collector to the emitter dead short let's try that on the other transistor uh, where's the emitter at stuff's in the way dead short. So the outputs blew up on this thing. I'll have to uh, check other components to make sure they didn't blow up. I was only running the signal at 4 volts RMS but still you know with shoot through it's possible the uh, big filter caps I was using uh, put a lot of current through. But still these these two emitter resistors are 0.22, so that's 0.44. So what would be the peak current? I mean, we weren't saturated. Uh, it's actually, uh, I was running at like 3.5 volts RMS times square root of 2, 1.414, 5 volts. 5 divided by... 0.44 11 amps you know that should be safe you know that's not outside of the safe operating area I'm pretty sure and I'm using uh, hang on a second BDW 42 and 47 transistor they're rated 15 amps I'm kind of miffed at why this thing blew up. It shouldn't have blown up. It's just, it wasn't enough current. What a mystery. I'm going to replace these transistors and uh, I'm going to see if I can crack the cover off and see if I got a piece of garbage or something. I got them from DigiKey. They should be good transistors. So let me investigate this. Okay, I got the transistors out. I'll just check them here go from base to emitter or I mean collector to emitter dead short and we'll go the other way it'll be a dead short yep this guy here dead short and dead short 
normally I should see an open and over limit on the meter and the other way it would be 0.6 volts because there's that collector to emitter diode reverse bias diode in these built into these Darlington transistors never mind what I said earlier about the shoot through and the 5 volt thing that's not really correct I'm going to see if I can crack one of these transistors open and see what the die looks like I probably the die usually shatters but I can see the outline of it see how big it is well, I broke those transistors open you can see the rectangular area that's where the silicon was you can't see the top metallization layer because that breaks off whenever you crack open a transistor like this I'd have to dissolve the epoxy and hot fuming nitric acid and uh, I yeah, I'm not set up to do that but those die you know these are supposed to be 15 amp transistors and they they don't look that big one looks smaller hmm it's kind of odd I'm not saying this is a metric for judging the current but usually uh, transistor that handles a lot of current has a pretty large die these being Darlington's they have two transistors two resistors and a diode It's kind of a integrated circuit there I found this picture on the internet of a uh, 2N3055 and you can see how large the die is bigger than those ones I was just showing you and this is a fake part here but again, that's not necessarily a good metric for judging the current capability. There's the internal schematic. Collector current 15 amps. And there's the safe operating area. You can see the DC curve. It's at 15 amps until around six volts I guess and it starts to drop off we're not conducting DC though we're uh, it's kind of a pulsed waveform okay so this is the output we don't have to worry about the other circuitry but positive rail negative rail if this transistor was turned on we'll say around five volts relative to ground so this node is at five volts and something happened and this transistor stayed on and then this one turned on but you're still going to have a bulk of the voltage drop across these transistor junctions you know this is at 28 volts there'll be a few volts across this 0.22 ohm transistor or resistor so what's going to happen these are going to be pushed beyond their safe operating area limits Perhaps that's what happened. But the weird thing is, I was seeing a nice clean sine wave. You know, how would that stay on? It wasn't like it was stressed, unless it was something that happened fast. Really, the only thing I can do is put new transistors in and uh, monitor the voltage drop across these resistors here at high frequencies. If I'm seeing a large peak, I know I'm getting cross-conduction. You don't even have to have a load connected for that. You should see uh, the power supply current increase and you should see a large voltage appearing across the emitter resistors here. So I'll investigate it at that angle. Okay, I put new transistors in. Now I'm running the BD33 and BD34 Darlingtons. So to be safe, I remove this capacitor from the supply. I'm just running it direct and set the current limit low. I'm running it at whatever it is, half an amp. Running it at a lower voltage now just to be safe. And the amplifier is working. So I'm going to crank up the frequency here and see what happens. 
Okay, the blue waveform is the input. Kind of noisy, it's because it's at such a low level. I need to clean that up. I don't really have a shielded circuit or anything. Uh, yellow is the output. Not running a load right now. Because if it shoots through, it's, you know, the supply current will go up. So I'll crank this thing up. You can see the phase shift starting there. We're at 70 kilohertz. When this voltage gets to two and a half volts, it'll be three dB down. About there, 2.57, and it's a, uh, it's at 270 kilohertz. The power supply draw is 160 milliamps what's happening the uh, snubber network on the output I bet this resistor is getting warm yeah it's getting a little warm these are ice cold because you know that starts conducting that RC network conducts at higher frequencies so it's doing what it's supposed to do so I'll just crank it up it just gets smaller the currents actually dropping now because the signal got so small and we're over megahertz now you can see the outputs down to not much let's uh, we'll put it back to the roll off point Two and a half volts or so. About 300 kilohertz is the roll off point. Same as the other amplifier. Because uh, I'm running this about the same current in the input and I'm using the same uh, Miller capacitor value. Now I'm going to uh, crank up the supply voltage and see what happens. It's maxed out. Supply current is going up. I should turn that down. I don't have it on a heat sink. It'll max out anyway at the current limit. But I still don't want to smoke anything. 28 volts. Supply current is 250, 260 milliamps. I don't know what happened before. It seems okay now. Well, popped it again. I put the 4 ohm non inductive load. I watched the waveform on the scope. I was turning it up and it just kind of collapsed. I didn't see any oscillation or anything. Something with these Darlingtons, these monolithic Darlingtons, they, they don't like the load at the high frequency. See now. Yeah, I got current limited. I said current limit. And these, you know, currents just flowing straight through them. These resistors are warm. It's just a continuous one amp. Not very warm, but you can tell they're constantly conducting there. I mean, the inputs are shorted together, so there's no signal going in. Nothing to oscillate. Nothing on the output, it's just flat lining. These transistors are shorted again. They don't seem to be totally shorted as before, but they're certainly not working right. Well, shit. Didn't work out. Hoping I can have this thing tested and get the video over with, but nope. I guess that's what happens sometimes with designs running to these problems, unexpected problems. You know, they're supposed to be good transistors. You know, the other ones were 15 amps. These are 10 amps. Plenty of voltage. You know, it was working fine as an amplifier. Granted, you know, if I said that before, uh, you're not going to run the amplifier at such a high frequency. But the way it failed, it, it seems like there's just too much weakness. You know, again, I didn't even have these 
big filter caps on the power supply is running direct off the uh, power supply outputs. But the problem is I'm going to have to redesign this board to use discrete outputs and drivers instead of these monolithic Darlingtons. They're just not doing the job for me here. So I'm going to have to recover parts, try to recover some of these parts. I hate throwing parts away. And uh, redo the layout, set up a board again. It takes time to do this, and i got to fit it in with work. So uh, I'm just going to delay this project right now. But trust me, I'm going to tackle it again. I just need some time away from it. Snickers came over here to lay on my lap, comfort me in my time of grief. You know, I could have cheated and just put transistors in and skip this test and then, you know, go on to other tests and hope it didn't fail like in the step response. But I'm not going to do that. I don't want to release an amplifier that might have a weakness to it. So yeah, like I say, I'm just going to redesign it with discrete outputs and go from there. Well, I think I said enough. We'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.